Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to this online training video. This video will be network connectivity and configuration. In this module, we will review how devices connect to Pure Access Cloud and Manager, how to configure PowerNet and Pure IP devices on the network, and we'll use the Isonus configuration tool for that initial configuration. So how do devices connect to Pure Access? Pure IP devices, or RCO4s, are pre-configured to connect to Pure Access. The PowerNet devices, RCO3 and IP Bridge, are not. DHCP is preferable, but static addressing can be used. In fact, DHCP with reservation is the optimal configuration. The devices use client mode or call home to connect to Pure Access. The configuration tool is used to configure existing devices to connect to peer access. Outbound ports are usually open, making connectivity easier. Since the device is inside the network, we don't want to try to connect into the network. We want to have the device connect from inside the network, out of the network, into peer access cloud. All Isonus devices use port 55533 to connect. That's the only port that we need open. So let's take a look at how these devices connect. We've got our reader controllers out at the door, connected to an edge-based PoE switch, going through the corporate network to the router firewall, which gives them access to the internet, and then finally out to peer access. So our reader controllers are programmed to connect out to peer access cloud, so they're going to start to initiate a connection first by talking to their local switch. Then they'll be sent through the corporate network to the router firewall to get access out to the internet. Once they get to the internet, they'll bounce around some routers on the internet for a little bit until they get to the Amazon Web Services running Peer Access Cloud. Once they make that connection, they will have a TCP IP connection from the device out to Peer Access Cloud. If they're running Peer Access Manager, then the server would just be running on site, but the process is exactly the same. So how does this work for our RCO3 IP Bridge PowerNet devices? These things are not pre-configured to connect to Peer Access Cloud. The device is in server mode, and it will try to acquire a DHCP address once we plug it in. Server mode meaning that it will not try to initiate a connection with anything. It will wait to receive a connection from another device. If it does not receive DHCP, it will fail and revert to an IP address in the 192.168.1. something range. If it successfully attains an IP address and you set it to client mode via the configuration tool, it will then start to call home to the address configured, whether it's Pure Access Cloud or Pure Access Manager. If it successfully attains an IP address but it's left in server mode from its defaults, it will wait for something to initiate a connection to it. It will not try to connect to Pure Access. So by default, the RCL3 and IP Bridge will not try to initiate a connection to Pure Access. The RCO4, on the other hand, will try to initiate a connection out to isonuspureaccesscloud.com. Its default is client mode, DACP, and to reach out to our cloud infrastructure. If DACP fails, the device will revert to an IP address of 192.168.254.119. Tip, if a device takes a long time to boot up, about 30 to 60 seconds, it is set for DACP and not receiving an address. That goes for RCO4, RCO3, or IP bridges. What is the Isonus config tool? The Isonus config tool finds Isonus devices on the network and configures them to communicate with peer access. It finds the devices through layer two broadcast messages on the subnet the PC is running the application on. Whenever possible, just do this in your lab, your test bench, or other controlled environment for ease of install. Because once you plug them into somebody else's network, you don't know how that network is configured, if it's configured correctly. Now let's take a look at the configuration of our devices. So here I have the configuration tool on my desktop. We'll go ahead and double click that to bring it up. Now let's review the interface. The first thing we want to do is click Discover Units to find any Isonus devices that are on the subnet I'm connected to. Here we can see I've got RCO4, some RCO3s, and an IP Bridge 3. The other thing I can do here is run a connection test. 
This will basically just ensure that the subnet that I'm on and the IP scheme that I've received can make a connection out to Peer Access Cloud. You can set encryption devices here, but this will be talked about in another course. Let's go ahead and click on Advanced Settings and see what that brings up. So we can see we can change the connectivity mode. By default, it's in client mode. We never want to change it out of client mode unless we're maybe connecting to one of our OEM partners that requires the device to be in server mode for whatever reason. We can change our host IP address. For example, by default, it points to isonuspeeraccesscloud.com. So if you have a cloud license, you will just leave this at default. If you're taking the final exam, you'll probably want to change it to Isonus Peer Access Demo. If you are using a Peer Access Manager instance, you're probably going to change this from um, a host URL to specifying a host IP address. For example, 192.168.1.203 may be my Peer Access Manager local instance. This DNS piece here is critical. Because we're connecting to our URL, such as isonuspeeraccesscloud.com, we need to resolve that into an IP address so we can actually make the connection. Without the DNS, that would fail because DNS converts those URLs to IP addresses. You do not ever want to connect to cloud by pinging the cloud URL and then taking one of those IP addresses because Amazon Web Services has a load balancer which will expand and contract. So the IP address that you have at that time may not be around in a day or a couple of days. So if you're connecting to cloud, always make sure that you connect via the URL. If they want to change the DNS address, they can. This is a free Google DNS. I've used it for many, many years in the past, and I've never had any issues with it. But as long as their DNS server can resolve the address, you should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click back on basic settings. On my network, I have DHCP, so my devices are good for DHCP. We're going to point them to Peer Access Cloud, and they're already defaulted to be set in the client mode. So if that's all I need set for this configuration, I can just set select all discovered devices, click configure selected units, and it will go ahead and send that configuration to all those units and they will reboot. So what happens when we need to do static addresses in the system? We're basically gonna do pretty much the exact same thing, except I'm gonna go ahead and unselect all these devices because we're gonna need to do these one at a time. So, for example, my network administrator has given me an IP range of 192.168.1.160 going upwards from there. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce this back to basic settings, and we'll click on advanced settings to expand this. And we're going to go ahead and change this to a static IP. So we'll go ahead and put in our IP address. That one, that 160 is our first one. Our subnet mask. Zero and our gateway, which will most likely be 192.168.1.1 or maybe .254. So now that we've got the communication settings in there, we're going to go ahead and select the first one. We're going to go ahead and select configure selected units. Now we're going to change this to our next IP address, which would most likely be .161. We'll uncheck the last one, check the next one configure the selected unit. Select the next one, change the IP address, configure selected unit. And so on and so forth until we configure all these with the IPs that I've been given by my network administrator. Later updates to the configuration tool will allow you to put in the range and be able to one click and done. But as we can see here, I've got six devices and pretty quickly I was able to just go in and change those addresses and set them statically on the device. Those are the basics of the config tool. Again, the encryption settings we'll talk about in another course. All right, so in this module we reviewed how devices connect to Peer Access Cloud and Manager using client mode in either a URL for cloud or most likely an IP address for Peer Access Manager. We talked about how to configure PowerNet and Peer IP devices on the network. They're both DHCP by default. PowerNet devices aren't pre-configured to talk to cloud. Peer IP devices are. 
And finally, we actually use the iSonus configuration tool to configure these devices with their initial configuration. We reviewed setting them up to point them to cloud. We reviewed changing it to Pure Access Manager IP address if we need to. And we reviewed configuring static addresses in the devices. Thank you for watching this training video and have a fantastic day.